free. Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So thank you very much. I'm sure you're going to find this very informative um, and enjoy. Thanks very much, Gretchen. Hello, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I just was told that, we, that maybe I shouldn't have had my Mocha Mods coffee in here, so I have to stand in front of it, I think. <laughs> Should I have not brought that in? I'm sorry. Um, uh, I am Arthur Bergeron. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at a firm called uh, Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 52 of us. We're in central Massachusetts. I do nothing but elder law. Um, what I really would like to do someday in my life is just do nothing but cottage law and just spend the summer down here, which I really love. Um, I have not done a presentation for a few weeks because I've been on the vineyard for like a week and a half. So if I'm a little off my game, I'm like really sorry. Uh, I, 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 when I talk to, uh, um, to Gretchen and to Hazel uh, about the program today, by the way, was it Hazel that I saw last? Great clarinet. Was it, wasn't that, yeah? Wasn't that right, doing bolero? And I'm looking and I'm saying, there's Hazel out. I actually know that person. That was great. No, it was terrific. So, I'm sorry. So, so uh, we talked a little bit about kind of the presentations that I've done here in the past. And what she asked me to do was to really kind of compress, to kind of go through a set of the kind of the, the major issues that you folks would be talking about regarding your cottages. I know I do, in the nature of my work, I do a lot of planning for people their, whose goal in life is basically to make sure they don't run out of money before they die, a very important goal. That's elder law. It's pretty much making sure you don't run out of money before you die. And then estate planning, which is making sure that after you die, what you have goes where you want it to go uh, and doesn't drift away to other people like, like uh, Mass Health or the Department of Revenue or the IRS or lawyers or other people. So a lot of this presentation is really about those things. Uh, I'm going to do this manually. I am very low tech, so if I screw up on something, this is totally my fault. Blame my paralegal. Ooh, she even snuck away, so I can't even point to her to blame her. So my, the couple that I always talk about when I'm doing presentations is Frank and Mary. Um, Frank and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Jr. Um, and here's their situation. See if this sounds familiar to any of you, right? So they own a house someplace, uh, maybe in Massachusetts, maybe not. They've got a campground property that is, uh, you know, used to be worth more, but is now worth 300,000 because of where the market went and stuff. Uh, and they purchased that property, this is important to remember, for $50,000. Now, for any of you who have been here for a long time, you know it wasn't so long ago that you actually did that. You actually purchased a cottage for $50,000. So I, I was, I, we, we passed some people, my wife and I were, were walking and, and uh, this woman in front of us said, oh, my mother, she, she, she had a choice. She could either buy the cottage or do a wedding. She took the wedding. This was like in the 1970s, and the cottage was worth like $4,000, she said. And now she's really, they're kind of bummed out about that. So anyway, they bought the cottage for $50,000. Uh, he has an IRA of $300,000. She has one worth $100,000. They have savings of $100,000. So they have total assets of a million two. They've got a set of issues that they worry about. First, they worry about making sure they don't run out of money before they die which for a folks in this category means making sure that as a result of Alzheimer's or some other disease that causes dementia, they don't get wiped out. Um, uh, so much of the work that I do as an elder law attorney, really elder law, I've come to appreciate is really Alzheimer's law. It's about um, people who are worried about getting dementia, people who have dementia, people whose relatives have dementia, because they realize, as you folks all realize, that the, that the issue um, is that Medicare, health insurance for the old, which was designed to keep old people from going broke, doesn't deal with 
dementia issues. It deals with if you got cancer, they'll do, we'll do operations, we'll do all this other kind of stuff, but if you've, and if you've got diabetes, you know, you're in the hospital, it's all covered, but if you need someone to help you dress in the morning, or you need somebody to be with you at home because you need somebody, otherwise someone's gonna drift into the road, um, there's no help for that, and that's why people worry about that stuff. So they're worried about nursing home costs, they're worried about tax avoidance, we're gonna talk about that, they're worried about probate avoidance, because who wants to, you know, nobody in their estate plan has ever said, I think I'd really like to leave $100,000 to the IRS um, or to my lawyers, right, so that we can get through the probate process. And then they, and for folks here, and actually really for folks throughout the island, um, this is such a magic place. Um, the typical estate plan, or when folks are doing an estate plan and you're dealing with their real estate, or in this case, Frank and Mary's house, no one's really worried about, oh, well, what happens to Frank and Mary, Mary's house after we die? Well, it's easy. You sell it and you divide up the money, right? It's very different, though, with the campground property. Nobody wants to sell the campground property and divide up the money. You want to kind of keep the campground. So that's a kind of a separate issue. So we're going to talk about all those things. So first, um, in their current estate plan, Frank and Mary's, is if one of them dies, they'd like to leave everything to the spouse. And when both of them died, they like things divided up among the kids. And does that sound familiar, right? So this is kind of every, a lot of people's kind of basic estate plan. So the question is, then what do you do? What happens if Mary, for some reason, needs to go into a nursing home? Well, um, many people think that in this situation, if Frank and Mary are both alive and Mary has to go to a nursing home, that, oh my God, the world has just ended because not only is it sad that Mary has to be in the nursing home, but all of their assets are going to have to get spent down on the nursing home. Well, in Massachusetts, um, that is not the case. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And I want, to, I want to mention here that I'm talking here about Massachusetts, how Massachusetts interprets the federal Medicaid regulations. Medicaid, as opposed to Medicare. Um, Medicare is a federally funded program that is totally federally funded and therefore all the rules are federal and they're universal across all states. Medicaid is partially funded by the federal government but there are 50 different contracts with the 50 different states. Therefore the rules that apply, the Medicaid rules, and those are the important rules as far as nursing home care because Medicaid will cover someone's nursing home care forever. Medicare will only cover, cover someone's nursing home care for as much as 100 days, right? So Medicaid is very important in these kinds of cases. Those rules vary from state to state. However, if you are in Massachusetts, uh, and if Frank and Mary are living in Massachusetts, and Mary goes into the nursing home, then while Mary cannot have more than $2,000 in countable assets, Frank can own the home uh, as long as it has equity of less than $814,000, which is this case. Uh, he can have other cash or cash equivalent assets equal to $117,240. Don't ask me how the government comes up with these numbers, it's complicated, but that's the number. And that number is national. Uh, and Frank can have infinite income, infinite income. And therefore, you saw Frank's, you know, you saw their asset situation. What they would do in this case, if they wanted, to, they could almost immediately qualify Mary for Mass Health, and therefore have Mass Health be paying the bills for the nursing home for as long as Mary needs to be there. All they would have to do is transfer all their assets to Frank, uh, sell the cottage, and we're going to get to that. Sell the cottage, um, take all of the cash that they now have. They've, Frank now has this house, and he has this big pile of cash resulting from his IRA and her IRA, which he's now they've now transferred to him their savings, and now the sales proceeds from the cottage. Take all that cash and buy a big annuity. What is an annuity? An annuity is a contract between an individual, typically, and an insurance company. You give them money, and in return for that, they agree to pay you back most of that money plus a small rate of interest over a term. As long as Frank purchases an annuity, which calls for monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his life expectancy, the purchase of that annuity is a legitimate conversion from an asset, and remember he can only have $117,240 in assets, to an income stream, and he can have infinite income. So in Massachusetts, if Mary needed nursing home care, we could ship all the assets to Frank, have Frank turn all everything but his house into cash, 
and then with any money that he has that's over 117,000 buy an annuity and then Mary can immediately qualify. Now, what is the problem with this plan? The problem is the sell the cottage part, right? Because that's the part that they really didn't want to do uh, for themselves or for their children. So the question is, what can they do in that case? So for all their other assets, Frank and Mary, oh, I'm just going to mention one other thing about Frank and Mary, sorry. Um, the other thing that Frank ought to do in that situation, if Mary is in the nursing home or if they're worried about that, is change his will. You'll recall that Frank and Mary's estate plan was, if I die, I want to leave everything to my spouse. Well, if Frank dies and Mary is in the nursing home or later goes to the nursing home and he's left everything to her, you saw the rules, she can only have $2,000 in order to qualify for mass health. So all the money has to get spent down. The cottage has to get sold. Everything has to get spent down except the house. At that point, Mary would qualify for mass health. But at that point, Mass Health would lean the house to make sure that it got repaid after her death. So, so that's kind of not where they really wanted to go. So the question is, what do they do? Um, well, there are several things. This is the one and only place where, when I'm talking to clients, I recommend that they really look at transferring assets out and waiting out the so-called look-back period. You folks are all. Well, there are a few people who are, who are here who are under 60, but not a lot, right? So, and, and I found that everybody who is older kind of has heard about this stuff, the basic look back rules, right? That in order to preserve assets from being counted and having to be spent down in order to qualify for Medicaid in any state, uh, you, have to you have to have transferred assets out of your name uh, and waited during a period, which everyone refers to as the look back period. Uh, for at least five years. Five years is the Massachusetts rule. The federal government allows states to impose look-back periods of as high as 10 years. Uh, most states haven't. Uh, but I'm just telling you the Massachusetts rule. So there's a period of, there is a, you need to do a transfer and then you have to wait through the look-back period. So there are several ways you can do that. The easiest is to just transfer the cottage to your kids. You transfer the cottage to your kids and you wait five years and now the cottage is safe. Right? Um, a, you may want to do that just outright, or you may want to do that but retain, Frank and Mary want, may want to retain a so-called life estate in the property. That is, the right to control the property and use it for as long as they are alive. And I'm, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about how that, how that affects your lease issues a little bit later on, but that's a second possibility and there may be some reasons for that and we're going to talk about that a little later.